On Monday, January 2nd, 2023, the automotive world was hit with a shockwave that will echo through the community for years. Ken Block, rally driver and founder of both DC Shoes and Hoonigan, tragically passed away in a snowmobile accident near his ranch in Woodland, Utah. First of all, I want to say my most heartfelt condolences to the Block family and I wish you nothing but the best moving forward. In honor of his memory, let's take a look back at not only his achievements, but also his legendary influence on the car community. Ken Block was born in Long Beach, California all the way back in 1967. When he was growing up, he enjoyed going to Dodgers games, skateboarding, as well as riding BMX bikes. He preferred individual sports over team ones, and that's one of the things that led him into skateboarding. It was this love of skateboarding that eventually led him to found DC Shoes in 1994, along with Damon Way and Clayton Blem. Now, skateboarders are notoriously hard on shoes. I mean, it doesn't take long to go through a pair on fresh grip tape. And at the time, there weren't any big shoe brands that cared about making apparel aimed specifically at the skateboard market. But DC did, and they built footwear optimized for the rigor of the sport. They designed simple changes that made a huge impact on the longevity of the shoes, like adding nylon loops around the spots where the shoelaces would tend to wear away from abrasion. And it was Ken Block who designed the first DC shoes, working with advice from other skaters. They were such a hit that they went on back order pretty much immediately after they dropped their first release. DC shoes would go on to sponsor some of the biggest names in the sports, like Danny Way, Rob Deerdeck, and even more recent superstars like Nigel Houston. After the astounding success of DC Shoes, the brand would eventually be sold to Quicksilver in 2004, and Block would turn his attention to the world of off-road rally. Since Block grew up a fan of rally, he dove headfirst into the sport, and instantly he became one of the fastest drivers on the American grid. In an interview back in 2014, he said, I came at it from a perspective that I was older and I was just gonna try and be the best driver I could be. Block's first rally was Canada's 2004 Rally of the Pines, and he was running a full American schedule by the following year. In 2006, he won his first race in the Rally at the 100 Acre Wood, and by 2010, he had won that race five straight times. Over the next 17 seasons, he would go on to win 23 rallying events at the national level. Going into the last rally of the 2022 American Rally Championship season, Block and his co-driver Alex Gelsomino had won four events in a WRC spec Hyundai i20 and were in a tight battle with Subaru's Brandon Simonuk and Keaton Williams. It was only the Subaru team's win at this final race that gave Subaru the win in the championship. And keep in mind, at this point, Block was 55 years old. That's crazy to think about the fact that he was able to not only keep up with the young, energetic drivers, but beat them throughout the season and almost take the championship. Ultimately, Block's enthusiasm for rally would lead to the creation of arguably his greatest contribution to the automotive community, Hoonigan. The moment that Hoonigan burst onto the scene was actually on a show called Stunt Junkies that aired on the Discovery Channel all the way back in 2006. Block launched a WRX STI from a dirt ramp, flew a record 171 feet, landed on the other side, and drove away. Practically no one remembers the show, but no one could forget that stunt. It basically launched Hoonigan as a brand, and it led to the crazy YouTube series that enthralled millions of viewers known as Jim Gymkhana. It didn't matter what kind of car it was, Fords, Porsches, Audis, you name it, and the Hoonigans would turn it into some crazy, monstrous creation and toss it right into a pit of tire smoke. The cars used in the Gymkhana series varied from Subarus to Ford Fiestas, classic Mustangs, Ford trucks, and most recently, the custom-made by Audi all-electric, all-wheel drive S1 Hoonatron that makes, wait for it, 2000 212 foot-pounds of torque. The series also visited a wide variety of locations, both domestic and international. Gymkhana 10 actually featured five different locations in a single video. Sweden, Detroit, Michigan, 
Mexico, Los Angeles, and Shamrock, Texas. Now, there's no way I'm gonna be able to go through every single feature in this video, so here are a few of my favorite moments. Jim Connor 3. He manages to throw this rally-built Ford Fiesta into drifts on the steepest banked circuit in the world at La Autodrome in France. Jim Conna 5. This sideways jump drift, as well as doing donuts around Travis Pastrana while he's holding a wheelie on his motocross bike. Climb Conna 1. This epic over-the-edge shot where he hangs the tail of the V2 Hoonicorn over the open ledge at Pikes Peak. Climb Conna 2. The first truck in the series tackles the Tianmen Mountains in China. The scenery in this one is just stunning. And finally, Electricana. Block throws this 2,000 foot-pounds of torque monster into a massive reverse entry U-turn and follows it up with an even bigger flat-out 360. These are only a taste of the Gymkhana features, and I think it's pretty safe to say that this series has had very nearly the same influence on the car scene as the Fast and the Furious franchise. I mean, just look at street takeovers right now, but that's a whole nother debate that we are not gonna get into. Needless to say, the impact that one man can have on a community cannot be overstated. Ken Block was an inspiration to people literally all over the world. From the skate scene, to BMX and motocross, to the car community, on behalf of all of the people influenced and inspired by one Mr. Ken Block, I say, Thank you very much for everything you've done for us. Showing people that anyone can change paths in life and find success, that anyone can create a brand that's relatable to its audience, and that everyone is welcome in your community as long as they have the passion and the willingness to participate. Your likeness may never be seen again, and your influence will live on through your family, your friends, and your supporters. Again, my condolences go out to the Block family. Rest in peace, Ken Block.